Hi guys, this is Jostin from the blog DietitianMeetsMom.com. I'm a dietitian and a mom of two, and today I'm going to be talking all about all of our favorite baby led weaning and toddler feeding essentials. Those must have items that we use over and over, most of them every day. Alright guys, so today, like I said, we're going to be talking all about those favorite baby led weaning products that my family loves. I'm a registered dietitian, my husband's an occupational therapist. So we love to get really functional stuff that works really well for our family. So um, things, especially with like feeding, we just like to make sure that it's, you know, encouraging our baby to eat as well as they can on their own and those kinds of things. And I'm just gonna show you our favorite. They're easy to clean. Most of them are made out of silicone, glass, or stainless steel. So there we go. All right, first up, plates and bowls. Most of us like some kind of material for our plates and bowls that is not breakable um, because every baby goes through that stage, you know what I'm talking about, where they just throw them. <laughs> my daughter's in this stage right now. So here's my favorites. These Bumpkins plates are really great. They um, suction, these are our everyday plate, the ones that we use most often for especially for my daughter and my son still uses it. He's three for lunch and breakfast sometimes. So they suction to the table pretty well. Pretty hard to get up so they don't get thrown as easily. So I like them because they have the sections and they're hard to pull off the table. They are made of silicone and they come in all sorts of colors. And I will link all of these products in the comments box below so that you can go check them out and get them. So my other plate is another silicone plate. This is the OXO brand. I love the OXO brand of a lot of stuff. So this is the OXO top plate. It does not suction down, but it is weighted. And what I love about it is it comes up on the edges. It's kind of scooped. So depending on what you're eating, this can be really nice because it kind of curves in, helps a young baby to, or even a toddler to, get the food out appropriately so that's kind of why we bought that um, and then we have the bowl which is the same design um, it's kind of goes in so it's perfect for a baby that's learning to scoop and it still needs a little bit of help so those are the taut oxo brand ones then for my other bowls these are the first set of bowls i bought and they are just some off brand i found on amazon so they came two in a pack and I've had them since my son was six months old. They've held up great. They suction down. You do kind of have to push. So the thing about it is you, if you want it to suction really well to the table, then you need to push it down and then fill it up. These bowls I highly recommend and then the plates are awesome too. Okay, next up we're going to talk about silverware and utensils. There are so many different baby utensils and toddler utensils on the market. Um, we keep it really simple. So we bought this. It's like a Montessori silverware set. Just basically just like an adult silverware set, but smaller. Um, I do like to have my babies and toddlers use this smaller set. It's easier for them to handle, and I just think that it goes a little bit better when they are learning. And so I love this set. It comes with a spoon, fork, and knife. I like to start out my kids fairly young learning how to use, you know, traditional silverware. So this set's perfect. Now, when my babies were six months old, I did use these spoons, and they are made out of silicone. They come two in a pack. They are a little bit easier to scoop, and I just think um, they also make a great teether so they can kind of, you know, chew on them, but they're more certain to get a little something on their spoon. So we did use these with our babies when they're younger, but then um, sometime probably around one or a little before even, we start using a regular spoon. So that is all the silverware we really use. Next up is cups. Obviously, a lot of parents wonder about what kind of cups to transition their kids to once they get away from bottles. I have a whole blog post on sippy cups, so I will link that below. You can be sure and check that out if you have more questions or wonder about more cups on the market. These are our favorites. These are the ones that we use all the time. This is the Easy Peasy Tiny Cup, and you can buy this off their website. It is just two ounces. As you can see, it's very small, fits in a baby's hands really well. It's weighted on the bottom, so it's harder for them to tip over. 
And then the way that it is um, kind of curved up, it makes it very easy for them to take sips. I bought this for my daughter. They were in high demand, just come out whenever my son was a baby and I never had the chance to get one. We use glass shot glasses, which I had read online that baby drops it a few times, they'll learn and then they'll quit dropping it because they know that it breaks. It took more than a few times for my son to learn that lesson and it got very tiring to be sweeping up glass all the time. <laughs> anyway, I'm really thankful for this cup. It's made of silicone, so I feel good about my baby using it and she loves this little cup. They also have a, what's called a mini cup and it's a little bit bigger. This is definitely highly recommended for baby lead weaning. Great cup to teach them how to use an open cup. So next up is straw cups. For a lot of baby this there is really no need to do like a traditional sippy cup. You can usually transition straight from a bottle to a straw cup. That's what we did with my son. He learned how to use a straw very naturally at a really pretty young age. And this was his first straw cup. It's all made out of silicone. It's the Silly Kids Silly Cup or something like that. It's got this lid, it's kind of stretchy. It's made out of silicone, the straw is silicone. The thing I don't like about it is the lid can be a bit tedious to put on, but what's great about the lid is it can actually go on other cups as well. So it's because it is stretchy, it can fit over another cup. So the lid can even just be great to travel with and turn another cup into a kid-friendly cup with a lid. But um, we still use this, some for my daughter, but I just think it is a little bit lighter weight than these glass cups that we also love, but we don't use it that much anymore. So it is an option out there and it's a pretty good option. So that brings me to my favorite cups. These come in a set of four. We have the set of four, but actually you can get a set of six or eight and there are so many different pretty colors in each set. They're a little bit different now, but um, it's the Elk and Friends straw cups and they have the newer version has a straw stopper right here. So the baby cannot pull the straw out, which is really handy because right now my daughter is in the stage of pulling her straw out every meal time. So my mom has the newer set at her house. They work perfect. They're awesome. The cups also come with some food lids without the holes. So if you were to make like overnight oats or something like that, you can put the, put the food storage lids on them. This cup is the Fugo Thermos straw cup. Um, it's made of stainless steel. It has a silicone straw up here. Now the main straw or the straw that goes down in the water is plastic. So some people do change that out for a silicone straw. The good thing about this cup is it's insulated. So we'll keep their drinks cold on a hot day. We use it to take with us in the car or traveling. This is also the cup that I send my son to preschool in his bucket. So this is what he takes to preschool since it does close. My kids figure out at a pretty young age, one or a little after, how to pop that open on their own. Now for my daughter, she learned how to use a straw a little bit later. I ordered this honey bear cup sometime when she was 11 months old. And this trainer, straw trainer, it's got a very tough straw in it and it's a tight fit in that hole. So what happens is this is, this is to teach them how to drink out of a straw cup. You squeeze the little honey bear's belly and the liquid actually goes up in the straw and it kind of provides them with a little bit of assistance so they don't have to suck it all the way from square one down at the bottom and bring it up. My daughter learned how to drink out of a straw fairly quickly after we started using the honey bear. So um, I do recommend this. My husband's an occupational therapist, so he worked with her on it, but it's easy enough. I mean, any parent could, could do it and you can just buy these off of Amazon. Before um, she learned to drink from a straw, she was a baby that never took a bottle. And I tried to offer her milk in an open cup because you can do that, but she would kind of turn her nose up at it. She, she would take water in her own open cup, but she only wanted the milk if it came straight from me. So I did buy, we had the Como Tomo bottles from when my son was a baby and I bought a sippy spout to put on it just to see if maybe um, that was sort of the missing link for her and then she would do a sippy cup and could drink milk since she wasn't doing a straw yet, but it didn't really work. She learned how to drink out of a sippy cup, but she still didn't want her milk in it. But if you do need some kind of transitional sippy cup, um, I know a lot of people have these bottles and 
so it does make good use of it just to buy the sippy spout. And it actually can be transitioned to like a weighted straw cup as well. So this has a weight on it and it is a silicone straw and then you just pop that in and then it becomes a straw cup also. If I had to recommend which cups to get, I would say these are a must for every family, whether you've got babies or toddlers, as well as these for travel. And then I just love these for little babies, teaching them to drink from an open cup. Next up is bibs, whether you're baby lead weaning or just doing um, any form of baby feeding, really, your baby needs some bibs because babies are very, very messy. <laughs> so this is just a basic silicone bib. Um, my daughter does not like this kind. She thinks that they're, I think they're too bulky and stiff for her. She will rip them right off. My son did really well with these for a long time. I like them because they're easy to clean. I, can, I have a scrub brush. I can just scrub it off after meals. I can throw it in the dishwasher at night. Um, I find that they're just really easy to clean. You don't ever have to put them in the laundry. So that's what I like about them, but all babies may not like these. These little bumpkin bibs are nice. They are easy to wipe down and um, they usually come in like a set of three. So what I really love these for is our diaper bags and to keep in the car for traveling. You can also throw these in the laundry so they do make good bibs. Now, this is a little too slinky again for my daughter. She's so particular. She's gotten to where she will wear these now, but they aren't necessarily her preference. But I do think they're a really good option for most babies. Again, my son had no issues with those. So this is my favorite, favorite bib for both my kids. I just love these bibs. These are the Bee Apron Baby Bibs. I have the smallest size for my daughter. And then my son, I have this bigger, like three-year-old size. So they just cover, I feel like they cover the baby a little bit better. They actually go around in the back and then they tie in the back. So it makes it hard for the baby to get, I mean, they can't get it off unless they manage to get it untied and my kids have not figured that out. So that's why I love them. Um, they are softer than the bumpkin bib, but they're still incredibly easy to clean off. So the way that the fabric is, which they just want, rinse off really easy in between meals and then you can hang them up to dry and they're dry by the next meal. And then you can just throw them in the laundry every so often to get them extra clean. So um, my son doesn't use a bib anymore, but he does still use this for when he cooks with me or does projects and activities. So I feel like these bibs are a must for any family. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is popular baby led weaning books on the market. There are so many. I've seen a lot come out over the past three years even since I had my son. So this one, Born to Eat, is my favorite. It's wrote by two registered dietitians and their philosophy is just honoring that babies are literally born to eat so they know what to do and um, it just talks about the baby led weaning process and just trusting them to eat and um, it goes through each stage and when your baby is ready to move on to the next stage. So like six months old is sort of the pre-eater. And then when we move into seven and eight months, it's like an exploration phase. And so they've got lots of tips and um, stories kind of woven on, ideas of what they can eat. They talk about how to cut the food, tons of references. Definitely recommend this book. My second favorite one is Simple and Safe Baby Led Weaning. This is a newer book. I don't remember seeing it when my son was a baby but it has a lot of different ideas um, as well on what you can serve your baby. It goes through different foods and um, just different things to think about, allergies, those kinds of things. So definitely recommend this book, also wrote by a registered dietitian. And then this one, Baby Lead Feeding, has a lot of recipes. So sometimes, you know, the, the great thing about baby lead weaning is a lot of times you can go ahead and serve your baby what you're eating, but some families may, it may be a time that they want to change their eating habits for the better or um, think about eating a little bit differently so that their baby can have more nutritious food. So this book has a lot of different recipes that you can try for your baby and for your, you know, um, family meals. So definitely this is another great book. It's just called Baby Lead Feeding. 
thanks for watching with us today. Um, one thing I didn't really talk about was baby led weaning high chairs. If you're looking for the perfect high chair for your little one, I do have a post on my website, dietitianmeetsmom.com, all about ba the best baby led weaning high chairs. So be sure to go check that out, as well as the post about all of these products on my website. So I will link those below along with all of the products we talked about today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel where I post lots of videos about feeding your family and tips for babies and toddlers.